Who's ready to learn how to mush their own dog team? Alright. So, guys, everything you need to know in order to be successful for your first time mushing. So, as you've seen out there, our tour sleds have a seat in the front um, built up, so they're a little bit different than this sled here. This sled is actually what we call a toboggan sled or a freight sled. So in Alaska, we've been using working dogs for over 10,000 years. So there's a really long history and that's one reason I find it so fascinating. But this sled here, you know, we can use it for carrying firewood. We can use it for carrying moose meat when we go hunting. Pretty much anything we need to move in the winter, this is how we do it. To this day, sled dogs are still way more reliable than snow machines. About 70% of our snow machines are either full of water, broken, not running, and especially in the cold, things just break on them. But that's dogs, true. they'll always run. And that's one thing that's really neat about them, is how reliable they are. Now as far as mushing goes, the things you need to know to mush successfully, so you're not going to need to know any verbal commands. So all the ha, all that stuff, I'm going to be in the front with my team, and I'm going to be directing them in basically which way to go. So your lead dogs, are all retired Iditarod champions, um, and a couple of them, actually three of the teams, have current race, race team lead dogs, so they're about as good as they get. And so they're trained to follow the team in front of them. So the only thing you need to be concerned with is slowing your team, stopping your team, and holding on. So, <laughs> Hold on for dear life. The number one rule in mushing is don't let go. And so that means even when your sled's stopped, you still want to hold on. So even when we're stopped, the dogs are going to be jumping in their harnesses, and we call it harness banging, because they're jumping, they're ready to go, because they love to run that much. So when we're stopped, make sure you still have positive control. I have seen people, oh, I'm going to adjust my face mask real quick, and then the dog teams jump, and they fall off backwards. And now there's no driver, so your passenger goes for a little adventure. Oh, <laughs> so God. make sure you hold what on with both hands. Now when it comes to slowing and stopping your team, we have two different brakes. So the brake we use for stopping, the brake we use for stopping is called the spike brake. And that's this brake here. And so this brake has four carbide tips that dig into the snow and ice really well. And so if you stand on this with two feet, like you see here, your team will immediately stop, won't be able to go anywhere, guaranteed. Really good way to stop your team. Now with a 14 dog at Diderot Racing Team, it might be a different story. Uh, it's a lot of power and so you might be standing on this brake for the first 40 miles and they're still not stopping. But we're going to be using five dog teams today, so it's a perfect amount of power to be able to control, especially for your first time mushing. So this is how you stop your team. Now when it comes to taking off, so this is what it looks like when you're stopped, when you're ready to take off. Um, all you have to do is drop one foot down to either runner, it doesn't matter which one, and pick up on the brake, and the dogs are just going to take off. From there, you can adjust your speed using the spike brake, or you can use what I like to call the soft brake or the drag mat, which is a piece of snow machine track that drags on the ground behind your sled. You can just apply a little bit of pressure with one foot, and that's sort of an uh, easier way to stop, um, less aggressive, because this brake is kind of... You know, it's going to be digging into the ice. It'll still do the job, but sometimes when you're on the trail, the drag mat's the way to do it. So once we're out on the trail, you'll see, I might just use my heel, like one heel. Um, we're going to be using brakes pretty much the entire time. Um, we're going to be going the same speed they go in the Iditarod, so anywhere from seven to nine and a half miles an hour is pretty average, and that's what they do for over a thousand miles. So, we're going to be, you know, we're not, we're not a sprint kennel, so our dog, we never let them go as fast as they want. Um, and so that's the way we're going to be using, that's the brake we're going to be using to keep them going the speed that we want them to go. When it comes to spacing, so we're going to have five sleds out on the trail, so spacing is important. You want to make sure that there's 15 to 20 feet minimum between your front dogs, your lead dogs, and the sled in front of you. Just like driving a car, you know, you don't want to tailgate. 
Um, just like driving a car, you know, if we come around the corner and I have to stop for some reason, it gives you a little bit of time to find the bay and slow your team down. Because these are trained race dogs, so they will try and pass the team in front of you. And then they get tangled up with the dog's team in front of you. Um, and we don't want that to happen. So 10, 15, 15 to 20, you know, it's not, it's not a perfect science, but just make sure you have a little bit of space. Um, when it comes to hitting turns, going into turns, the best piece of advice I can give you is when you're turning right, you can shift your weight to the right onto your right leg. When you're going left, you can shift your weight to the left like that. Uh, but the biggest thing is just making sure your speed's under control. And so you do that by using these two brakes. Does that make sense? So same thing when we do stop. So remember, this is how we stop. When you stop, make sure you stay on the brake even though your team is completely stopped. So you stay on the brake the whole time unless you're mushing. Um, and so the reason that is, is like I was saying, they jump in their harnesses. So I've seen people like, oh, I'm going to go get a selfie with my dog. And now all of a sudden, gone. their dogs are gone. And their passenger's going, whoa, why are we going so fast? And they look back and there's a ghost driving their sled. Uh. So, um, which at the end of the day, day it's not a big deal. I have a perfect record, not to brag, of catching loose sleds. So, uh... <laughs>